One thing is abundantly clear after that Miami Hurricane spring game. Cam Ward absolutely raising the bar at quarterback. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I have a lot to say after that Miami Hurricane spring game. I'm Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, and also host of Locked On ACC. Thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked On Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We're free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. Every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. On this episode, we will talk about Miami making some moves in recruiting yesterday, really pushing hard for two of the top interior offensive linemen in the country. But I want to talk about what happened in that spring game first. Now, um, for better or for worse, the first team offense – They beat the first team defense yesterday. I don't think there was any question. Now, you can obviously use that to prop up Miami's offensive players, especially the quarterback we're going to talk about. And then you do wonder, are there certain positions Miami needs to address on defense in the transfer portal, which opens tomorrow? Uh, And also, to be fair, the defense did have some important guys who were out. Takeem Mesidor has been out. uh, Well, not out. He's been limited in spring, I should say. Uh, you know, Ruben Bain's been out there, but he's been a little bit banged up. But we'll start with Mr. Ward, who Cam Ward put on the show yesterday that I think every Miami Hurricanes fan wanted to see. Because people like me who have had limited access to practices throughout the process have been talking about how good he looks, what kind of a leader he is, how accurate he's been, the arm strength, the decision making, which has been on point and all that. So I think a lot of folks out there are like, okay, but I actually need to see it in something that I can watch in order to believe it. And that's exactly what Ward was able to put on tape in the spring game yesterday. He balled out. And you notice something on social media, how quiet Miami's rival fans were last night. Not a peep. You know, I think the only thing that they could chirp Miami about was, oh, you know, they, they, they held their spring game at the track stadium and there was like a thousand people there. How pathetic. They weren't chirping about what was happening on the field, not as far as Cam Ward was concerned. So the ESPN broadcast, uh, they I don't think there were actual official stats taken. Um, so I saw a couple different versions of exactly what he did yesterday. But the ESPN broadcast credited Ward with going 19 for 24 for 324 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, I did see another unofficial stat that had him going 17 for 26 for 227 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Either way, Ward looked impressive, and not that you should be too surprised by this, uh, but there, you know, th- there definitely is. There's a difference between Ward and all the other quarterbacks on the roster. There is, there is separation, uh, and it's a good thing he's here, and it's a good thing he's your starting quarterback. Not to say the other guys didn't look good at times. We'll talk about it, but. Uh, there's definitely a difference with Cam Ward. Uh, I thought some of the things we saw from Ward, and it's it's only scratching the surface because, you know, in these situations, in these scrimmages, uh, which is the case in the spring game, you're getting plays blown dead. The quarterbacks are not being tackled to the ground. Uh, so there are certain plays where maybe he could have broken off a run or maybe he could have broken away from basically a two-hand tag, but they blow these plays dead. But still... I thought you saw a lot of evidence of Cam Ward's ability to improvise, his ability to manipulate the pocket and direct traffic, direct his receivers when he gets out of that pocket on a few occasions. You know, you saw some of those kind of improvised uh, shovel passes that he throws, and he does it in a pretty careful way. It's not reckless the way that he goes about doing that, uh, like a flip pass that he threw to Elijah Lofton after Lofton came out of the backfield. And I thought, you know, when you're talking about Ward's chemistry with his receivers, which is clearly there, especially with a couple of these guys on top. Now, we didn't, we saw a little bit of Jacoby George in the spring game, not a whole lot because he was wearing the red non contact jersey. He didn't start. Uh, JoJo Trader, who of course we love, kind of started in his place, and Jacoby George played limited reps. But in terms of the top two receivers, 
Uh, you know, Ward connected with Xavier Restrepo, very first pass attempt of the game, and connected with him throughout. And Restrepo made some great catches. There was one that they didn't credit him with, which I'm not sure why, because he clearly toe-tapped, kept his feet in bounds, pulled it in, was a beautiful catch, the type of stuff Restrepo does with regularity. And I also, I saw the chemistry between Ward and Isaiah Horton. And Isaiah Horton, to me, has been one of the biggest risers throughout spring football because Horton, you know, the six foot four heading into his third year wide receiver is, you know, someone who was not a starter last year, but made the most with the reps that he got. And I believe uh, Isaiah Horton is probably, you know, we still have fall camp coming up, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to nail down all the starting positions yet, but I do feel like Isaiah Horton is well on his way to be one of the three starting wide receivers for Miami this coming year. And you can see Ward connected his first of three touchdowns on the day was with Isaiah Horton, who had some big grabs throughout the game. And Horton, to me, is someone who's really going to step his game up. Uh, with the way that Ward played yesterday, by the way, uh, people are bringing this up, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with this. I saw Gabby Yerudia from 24-7 tweeting about this. Uh, when Miami is going to be looking for potential additions at – Positions like running back and maybe wide receiver as well. This month in the portal, transfer portal is opening tomorrow. It's going to be chaos. Hurricanes should not have much trouble enticing players to come here and join Ward. And by the way, Ward is not just going to kind of kick his feet up and sit idly by and wait to see who comes in like Ward. And we'll play a couple of clips uh, of our chat with Ward yesterday. But Ward, Ward is going to be active in, you know, recruiting others and being an ambassador and trying to bring other players to join him in Miami. And folks, by the way, I, I get the sense with talking with Cam Ward and talking with Mario Cristobal yesterday, expect Miami to be aggressive in the transfer portal, uh, looking for looking for players who can absolutely add value here, not just looking for Jags, because guess what? Miami is Roster spots are going to be precious here. You know, there's going to be some players this coming week. Prepare yourselves for it. There's going to be some players who leave Miami. There's going to be roster spots cleared. I would figure four, five, six players are going to come in, hopefully impact players only. And Ward is going to be active in that process. Yeah, I mentioned JoJo Trader earlier. He had some good moments in the spring game. He had the opportunity to step up and get a lot of extra first team reps with Jacoby George being limited. Elijah Lofton. He looks solid. He showed his versatility playing multiple roles, tight end, and he was, what, basically the second, I think he was the second running back on the field after Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson, by the way, did some good things as well. Uh, I like what I saw from him. Uh, I loved what I saw at receiver from Ray Ray Joseph. That was, uh, you know, again, I, I've been able to watch not everything, but limited moments throughout spring practices leading into yesterday. I thought yesterday was, you know, Probably the best, uh, the 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 some of the best catches I've seen from Ray Ray all spring. Climbed the ladder to go up and grab one of those. He's got that Xavier Restrepo type of vertical ability. Can really get up there and climb. Very athletic. I like what I saw from Ray Ray. Um, you know, you, you talk about the other quarterbacks. I thought that uh, definitely. Jakari and Emery both had some moments, uh, just not as consistent as Ward, of course. There's a reason why Cam Ward is the starting quarterback. And by the way, Ward, not only no interceptions yesterday, no fumbles. So there, there's that. I know the fumbling stuff is what a lot of people worry about. But I do want to talk about the backup quarterbacks, and I want to talk about the defense when we come back. We'll also uh, – we've got some clips from Cam Ward who, uh, again, he crushed it when he was talking with the media he talked about Elijah Lofton. He talked about his, you know, chirping and trash talking, which Ward loves to do in practice. He talked about his offensive line and what he's got in those big guys up front who protect him. He talked about the aforementioned Isaiah Horton and building that chemistry and Ward. He talked about the role that he's going to play in the transfer portal coming up. So my friends, we're still reacting to that spring game. By the way, let us know in the comments who you thought stood out and looked the best in the spring football game on Saturday. Uh, you can follow us, by the way, on X at Locked on Canes. Follow us there. We will follow you back. And we're only getting started. We're going to talk some recruiting as well. You want to keep it locked right here on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. And for the small business owners out there, I know you're keeping it locked to LinkedIn jobs because when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. 
LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're not looking, uh, you're looking in the wrong place, I should say. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen each and every day and your first watch. The everydayers, we love you. And if you want to take that everydayer experience to the next level, sign up to become a Locked on Canes insider. Click the link in the show description below. When you sign up to become a Locked on Canes insider, you get text messages directly from my phone to yours and vice versa. We were very active on there talking about the spring game, talking about recruiting. Miami landed one last night. We've already done an episode uh, about Brock Schott, the newest Miami Hurricanes commit, four-star tight end out of Leo, Indiana, who is uh, he and Luca Gilbert are going to come in together, and that's going to be a tandem that complements one another really well. Uh, and, you know, if you were a Locked On Canes insider, you were, you were prepared for something big to happen last night. So click that link in the show description below. Try it free for 14 days. If you like it, you can opt in for $4.99 a month. We give you a lot of added value on there at Locked On Canes Insiders. Uh, I thought um, that there was some, you know, initially – um, when I when I was watching the game, like from the sideline, um, I, I had graded uh, Emery Williams just a little bit higher than Jakari. I might have overreacted to a couple of the short throws that Jakari missed right in front of me. Emery Emery wasn't perfect on the day as well, but they both made some big plays, and I, I can see like an argument for Brown. Brown is clearly the guy with the potential that's through the roof because his deep throws, folks. He's always had the gun, but. The ball placement on that deep throw that he made to Shamar Kirk, and by the way, Shamar Kirk was awesome on Saturday. The ball placement on that deep throw was exquisite, and he had some really good ones. And Jakari also had what was around, I think, a 40-yard run that he broke out. And they, I know, again, they love to whistle these things dead, but there was no contact to whistle it dead. Like He, he broke loose and, and uh, made an awesome play with his feet, which he's capable of doing as well. Uh, there were also some really good moments from Emery Williams, uh, you know, especially the throw that he made to Shamar Kirk. Now, Kirk ended up doing a lot of the work with the yards after the catch, made a guy miss, went down the field, nearly scored a touchdown. I think he got down to the two or the three yard line. So there were definitely some some very some ups and some downs from your backup quarterbacks who were coming along. Jakari clearly showing progress. Emery Williams, especially given that, you know, he's only been healthy enough to actually play since like right when spring football started coming off that broken arm, he's showing progress. Now uh, I, I got to say on Saturday, not a very good day for Reese Poffenbarger, who was actually the second quarterback up. He was the next guy up after Cam Ward. Now um, I, I don't, I don't think that that one day was really a true reflection on the five weeks of spring football because he's looked very good at times. But uh, if you're obviously, if you're just basing things off of one day, Ward is clearly on top of the mountain, as we all know. And then, you know, there's some combination of Jakari and Emery Williams, whether, you know, depending on which one you thought was a little bit better. And then Reese Poffenbarger, you know, Judd Anderson got a little playing time. Actually, uh, I like the way he moves. Uh, uh, he, he moves very well for a six foot seven guy. Did throw a pick six, which obviously you don't want to see, but he's a true freshman. He's going to need time to develop, but uh, it was not a very good day for Reese Poffenbarger, you know, so I, I hope he's able to bounce back from that. I think he's been better at times during spring. Uh, but again, I, I can't rave enough when it comes to receivers about Shamar Kirk because Shamar Kirk is a guy that sometimes when we're having conversations about Miami's offensive weapons, that that's kind of a guy who doesn't get brought up a whole lot because you know people always talk about your your top three or four guys, Restrepo, George, Isaiah Horton now, and then young guys like Nye Carr who had some moments, and JoJo Trader get talked about a ton, Ray Ray Joseph, who was really good yesterday. And I think Shamar Kirk gets kind of lost in that conversation. That was a statement performance for him yesterday. So if, if he's like one of the guys who might be thinking, do I stay or do I go when the transfer portal opens up, he made a very strong case for playing time at Miami yesterday. Uh, and you like to see it. 
Let's talk a little bit about uh, defensive guys. Uh, overall, you know, someone who I thought was uh, was just really consistently active and impactful was Wesley Besaint at linebacker. Um, I think he's really taking the necessary steps to to bring his game to another level this year. Um, and it's not just the plays he made and the tackles he made. He's really fun to watch how vocal he is as a leader on the field. Uh, and, you know, him jawing a little bit with Cam Ward, we'll talk about that. Uh, some of the young guys look really – Marquise Lightfoot, I thought, flashed the most out of the true freshmen. Uh, he's already – he told us he's put on 17 pounds already since he got to Miami in January. Mario Cristobal joked about him that he never wants to see Lightfoot on campus without a sandwich in his hands. Lightfoot had a sack and a fumble recovery, was really active in the game. Bobby Pruitt, he was getting prominent reps with the first teamers at linebacker throughout the day. Uh, I thought Pruitt, Pruitt is someone who's been ascending since spring football started. This is a true freshman. I uh, also saw some good things from Cole McConathy, another true freshman on the defensive line. He says McConathy is really strong. Like I, you know, I, I'm assuming he's also got very good technique for his age, but with his, with his strength that like, it makes the learning curve of, of building the technique a little bit easier when he can just really bowl people over. And, and, you know, he's working on all those finer points with Jason Taylor to become a well-rounded pass rusher. I think McConathy is going to end up being one of the more underrated guys in this class. Uh, you know, someone else on the defensive line, I was happy to see get a lot of reps, like a lot of second team reps and even a few, I think a few first team reps towards the end was Anthony Campbell, the big, tall defensive lineman who transferred in last year. Uh, he was getting a lot of prominent. I hope he can find a rotational spot this year at defensive tackle. Going back to the offense, I want to talk a little bit more about the running backs. Chris Johnson was uh, was running back one yesterday. I thought he had some good moments. Elijah Lofton, of course, as well, who was the second running back up. Um, Trevante Citizen, he only I, maybe I counted incorrectly. He only had two carries in the game. Uh, Trevante didn't do a whole lot. You know, he big brace on his leg. He also had like the club on his hand. I don't know what happened to his hand, but his hand was wrapped. He still he still played. He went out there, but only had two carries. Uh, you could you could definitely tell he's still a little while away from returning to his form of two years ago. I continue to root for Citizen. Chris Wheatley Humphrey, I was impressed with some of the reps that he got. He can still put on size, of course, Hellcat, but he impresses me as a tough inside runner because uh, most people think of him as strictly being an outside speed guy because he's got that track speed and he's a little skinny. But I like that Hellcat takes a lot of pride in what he can do between the tackles. And as he continues to put on weight and strength in that strength and conditioning program, I think he's been going to become even more of a factor inside and more of a well-rounded running back. And also, like, remember, um, Jordan Lyle, not here yet. He's going to be enrolling in the summer. And that that's someone out of St. Thomas Aquinas who – and I, th I think he was at the game yesterday. I, th I think I saw – I think I saw Lyle. Uh, there was a bunch of St. Thomas Aquinas guys watching the game. I think he was among them. Uh, he's going to add some punch to the running back room as well. But, folks, do not be surprised. When that transfer portal opens up on Monday, um, I think running back is going to be maybe the position Miami is most active in because we're unclear on the Mark Fletcher timeline. Um Citizen, obviously, to me, is probably still a ways away from a guy that you can count on to be the consistent bruiser. So if you're looking for like a big featured back type of guy in the transfer portal, I think that's a position Miami's going to look at. Mario Cristobal loves him, the big physical running backs. We talked about Damian Martinez from Oregon State being an excellent option who's going to be officially hitting the transfer portal tomorrow. I think that's someone Miami's definitely going to take a look at. But I've also heard rumblings that – you know, and I, I don't know, I, I, I can't name names, but I've heard I've heard rumblings that there could be other big time running backs. I would consider Martinez to be a big time guy, but there's other big time guys who might enter that transfer portal as soon as tomorrow. So Miami could have a few options there. And I, I think cornerback is again, folks, when I mention Miami's first team offense, they beat Miami's first team defense. And that that says something very positive about. Miami's quarterback and their playmakers. I did think the pass rush did okay, but I thought the defense was secondary. I think Miami could probably use some additions, uh, at least one addition at corner, maybe an addition at safety as well. Mish Powell is a guy who's very consistent. He's going to be an anchor there. Daryl Porter is going to be an anchor in the cornerback room, but that's a spot Miami might look at adding there. Uh, so, all right, I want to, we'll hear from Cam Ward 
and we'll talk a little recruiting on the other side, folks. And you know what you want to do? You want to keep it locked right here. Recapping, reacting to the spring game. There were some big time recruits there. Don't go anywhere. We continue on Locked on Canes. I had a great time. UFC 300 on FanDuel yesterday, won some bets last night, my friends, and it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. It's locked on NFL mock draft live on April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern time streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern Time to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 7 Eastern Time, streaming live on the Locked On Sports Today uh, 24-7 streaming channel or YouTube or the free Amazon TV, Fire TV channels app, I should say. All right, my friends, uh, we had a chance to chat with Miami's QB1 after the spring game who, you know, put on the type of performance that made Seminoles fans pretty quiet. The gate, I, I will tell you, I did I did see some Gator fans who were, because remember, Miami plays Florida to open the season. The Gator fans were like, yeah, my, Miami looks pretty mid. We're going to blow them out at the swamp. All right, we'll see. It's going to be a fun game August 31st. Now, Cam Ward did say he's, He's not focusing yet on August 31st. He's still focusing on internally the team getting better because someone asked him, when are you going to start watching the Florida film? And Ward pointed out, right now, the Florida film is not that useful, right? Because rosters are not complete yet. Miami's going to add some transfers. Florida's going to add some transfers. Different teams from last year. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, you know, We've talked so much throughout spring ball about Elijah Lofton, Miami's versatile True freshman tight end who's gotten a lot of burn at running back as well. Here's Ward talking about Elijah Lofton and also talking about chirping a little bit with Wesley Besaint during that spring game. Um, very unique. Uh, the different skill set that he brings on the perimeter for us, in the backfield for us, pass protection. Um, that guy's going to see a lot of snaps this year. You know, I'm excited for him. Um, but I think the biggest thing about Elijah, you know, he works hard. Uh, you know, it's a lot of freshmen uh, coming in with whatever stars they have. You know, they think they made it already. But, you know, he's starting back from the bottom, and he's for sure made his way uh, back up to the top on this team. Cam, you and Wes kind of chirping a little bit during the game. Just how fun has it been able to play against these guys at this spring? Uh, it's been good. Um, the chirping you've seen from us is a lot worse in practice. <laughs> uh, so, you know, Wes, he's he, he going to be a good defensive linebacker for us this year, uh, especially uh, learning behind Kiko. Uh, so he's got meaningful snaps this spring. I can't wait to see him ball out for sure in the, in the uh, fall. Hey, you remember uh, when we had, was it Zaquan Patterson, I think, was was when uh, we had him on the show at the end of the week. And he told us, like, Ward, Ward gets very involved. Like, if there's ever, like, chirping and skirmishes going on in practice, like, w Ward is right in the middle of that. I, I love that from my quarterback. I love the fire. Uh, and I know Cam Ward loves the the potential he has from his Protection here at Miami. Uh, offensive line. Miami, you know, not, not the exact same personnel as last year, but last year Miami's O-line only gave up 12 sacks. Ward even said it. Only six of those were really on them when he studied the film from last year. I asked Ward about Miami's offensive line, and Ward was also asked what Miami's going to look like this fall. Because, again, the roster's going to look different. Players returning from injury, including Kiko Maui Noah, CeCe Maui Noah, um, Akeem Mesidor is going to be back from injury. Freshmen that haven't arrived yet, transfer portal players. Here's Ward on his O line first and what Miami's going to look like this fall. What's your comfort level been behind Miami's offensive line? Um, about a 10. If I could break the scale, I'd probably break the scale. Uh, you know, those guys, when they put them paws on you, it's hard to get off of them. Uh, so, you know, from J Rib to Zach, uh, Indiana transfer coming in to Coop being the, the vocal point of the O line, you know, those guys, you know, they deserve everything that's about to come their way. Uh, you know, I think they're one of the best O lines in the country. They're going to prove that this fall. Cam, also, you had some talented players here on the uh, field today, but you also got a lot of guys returning from injury, coming back, being ready for the fall. 
you know, looking at how that team's going to shape out, you know, what the potential do you see in this team today? Uh, high potential, uh, especially um, like JG. He um, went one for one with Tutty today. Uh, he ended up getting hurt uh, mid spring camp. Uh, Kiko on defense, um, Bane, he's, he's not 100% healthy, but he's healthy enough to go. Uh, so I think once we get everyone here in the summer, uh, with a transfer, when CC gets healthy to right tackle, uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be a pretty good football team come fall. And I asked Ward about Isaiah Horton, the chemistry he's building with Horton, and also uh, Ward was asked what kind of a role does he take when it comes to transfer portal? Is he gonna be an ambassador? Is, is he gonna be helping Miami recruit? Cam, it looks like some chemistry as well with Isaiah Horton. Talk about him, what he's done this spring. Uh, yeah, he's gonna have a breakout year for sure. Um, him one of the first players that's in the building every day. Um, I see his car every day I pull in. And, you know, he's somebody who just want to get better. Uh, you know, from the plays he made last season uh, to the plays he's going to make this season, you're going to see the difference in two. Uh, so I'm excited for him. Uh, you know, he's somebody that, you know, I can trust out there on the perimeter. He's going to make plays for us as well. Cam, on Tuesday, the uh, transfer portal opens again. It's going to be an interesting time here because you guys are obviously going to be looking for players and whatnot. How much do you get yourself involved in the recruitment process after being recruited here by some of the guys that are here? Um, I get myself involved a lot. Um, I was able to host Mish on his visit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when we had Melo here, the transfer with USC, I was able to host him. So, you know, I want guys going to play for Coach Cristobal. Um, you know, obviously I want some good teammates around me. Um, and that's what we need. And, you know, we're going to get the right guys in here this summer. Um, you know, we, I think we're going to see a different hurricane team this fall. I like that from Ward. And by the way, guys, we talked a lot about the spring game today. If you feel like there's anything good or bad that we left out that we should talk about, let us know in the comments below because we're going to be talking more about Miami spring game throughout the week. And, of course, coming up this week, we'll be talking a lot about the transfer portal. Players leaving, players coming in. It's going to be a real busy one. Uh, now, uh, Miami – and by the way, let me say, I thought, I thought the vibe was really good at Cobb Stadium on campus yesterday. Um, I, I think they just they did a really good job. It was good weather yesterday, which certainly helped. If it had rained or something, that would have sucked. But the weather was great. Uh, they had like a whole line of food trucks, you know, right there in the parking lot, which I think was really cool. You know, there were, you know, obviously the capacity was very low. I think it was like 1,500, 2,000 or something like that. But, uh, you know, the, the the venue, small, but it was packed yesterday. I thought the atmosphere was really good. Tons of recruits out there. So, you know, I, I know a lot of people were upset that they didn't hold it like in a bigger stadium or they didn't hold it in Broward. It would have been easier for some people to get down to. But I, I thought with what Miami did, Yesterday, I, I thought the atmosphere looked awesome, and I think the reason why Mario Cristobal really wanted to have it on campus was it just logistically made things a lot easier with all the recruiting stuff that they had yesterday. There were, I don't know, probably around 100 prospects, over 20 blue chippers that were on campus yesterday, and, you know, the idea of having to, like, you know, schlep up to Fort Lauderdale and come back with all those meetings going on just didn't really make logistical sense, so... I think Miami made some moves in recruiting. We'll talk about two of the top interior offensive linemen in the class of 2025. We're both visiting the number one interior offensive lineman, number three interior offensive lineman in the class. Uh, that number three guy, and I had a chance to to meet him and, and chat with him a little bit, said hello to him, was S.J. Alofatuli, Bishop Gorman in Las Vegas, four-star player, Third-ranked interior offensive lineman, according to 24-7 Sports. He's very lean, no bad weight on him whatsoever. That was something that jumped out on me, like no, no spare tire, no love handles, nothing like that. He's listed at six foot three, 290, very chiseled. Uh, he spoke with 24-7 Sports after the spring game. He said, quote, I feel like the team looked like it revolved around the whole offensive line. Wherever the offensive line is, that's how the team evolves itself off what they do. They were just telling me how important the O-line really is to the team, especially the great relationship with me and Coach Mirabal. Mirabal always tells me, you're the key for what we're looking for. The way I play, he was telling me he really likes the way I play, and I really appreciated that, Alofa Tuli says. And you know, he's someone he could end up, if he does come here, could potentially be you know, Miami's starting center for three or four years. Obviously can play guard at a high level as well. Dominant player out west at Bishop Gorman. I know for Alofa Tuli getting his mom over here, because you know they're originally, I think, I think from Hawaii and uh, you know in Las Vegas now, not close to South Florida. So you've got you got to win over the parents. You got to show the parents that the distance is worth it if you're here in Miami. And 
Alofi Tuli was someone, uh, there had been, I don't know, a month, six weeks ago, there had been a lot of momentum. He had been crystal balled to Miami. The momentum seemed to die off for a little bit. I think Miami is gaining some of that momentum back now with SJ. And yet yeah, the top interior offensive lineman in the country, Solomon Thomas, was also on campus Friday and Saturday, two day visit for him. Five star player, six foot four, 315 pounds. He's committed to Florida State. He's verbally committed to FSU. Miami's trying to pull uh, an Armando Blunt with him and get him to flip over here. According to Gabby Arudia, now Sol I, I did see SJ. I did not. I did not get a chance to talk to Solomon. So luckily, the guys at twenty four seven Sports did. According to Gabby, Miami really moved the needle with Thomas and his family. Uh, I guess uh, when they left the stadium, they were all wearing orange and green, which is nice. Uh, Thomas said this to twenty four seven quote. They invest in the offensive line. That's my biggest takeaway, he said. When you have a head coach who's an offensive lineman, I would expect that their main focus is having an offensive line. When you have an offensive line, you need somebody to protect. They've really invested in a quarterback, he says. I feel like that was a good move by them. Uh, he talked about uh, being able to hang around players like Tommy Kinsler and Derek Plaz. Uh, they're great guys on and off the field. I feel like they recruit not only big guys, but athletic guys. When you have a kid who wants to learn, that wants to be on that next level, and then having a bunch of those kind of guys, it makes life a lot easier. But in all of that, you have a head coach that's an offensive lineman. His hand is definitely going to be in the mix when it comes to offensive linemen. So I feel that, Thomas said. So you notice that the takeaways from SJ and from Solomon Thomas are pretty similar. They know Miami is an offensive line-centric program, and it's it's a place that can develop O-linemen. And that's something Cristobal and Alex Mirabal have a proven track record of doing. All right, folks, make sure to smash that thumbs up. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like button. If you're listening to the audio version, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your pods, make sure you subscribe to Locked on Canes and make us your first listen each and every day. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. By the way, tomorrow we're going to have a pro football focus analyst on who recently, Max Chadwick, recently uh, had high praise for Ruben Bain as a future NFL draft prospect. Thankfully, Ruben Bain can't leave for the draft. <laughs> Uh, until what would it be after the 2025 seasons we have at least two more years of Reuben Bain but we'll have a lot to talk about tomorrow transfer portal as well on another episode of Locked on Canes part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network your team every day